Hello and welcome to Music Motors. Uh, my name is Tom Ken. If you didn't know that, well, you're on my channel. If you didn't know you're on my channel, then click down below and click subscribe and then click that bell icon as well so you get reminders and notifications of when I'm doing stuff so you can keep up to date with everything. Uh, this is the 2019 Volkswagen Transporter. Now, the Transporter goes back years and years and years. I mean, if you go even past the 60s, you look at the splitty camper vans, bay window camper vans and panel vans and being the people's kind of van. This no longer has an engine in the back. At the front, you have a two litre diesel engine, although that is specific to this uh, the specific van because there's so many different uh, engine variants you can get. So it's a two litre, 150 PS, it's 340 Newton meters of torque. It propels you to 62 miles an hour in roughly 12 seconds and tops out at about 112 miles an hour. This is a van which kind of does everything and looks great, has amazing heritage, has really good potential for uh, camper conversions and really it's just a great utility. Uh, so on this episode of Music Motors I'm going to discuss the 2019 Volkswagen Transporter. Around town fuel economy. Now it's written that this is relatively decent and in reality it should be. It's a two litre diesel so you would expect that this is going to get somewhat frugal fuel economy. Now I don't have a load. This is a proper city test so there is going to be some start stop, there's going to be traffic lights, there's going to be fluctuations in speed between 20, 30, 40. Um, so just seeing what it can do but it will be a relatively light city test and just seeing what it can turn around. The result was 38.4 miles per gallon. So definitely a drop down from what you can get on a run, but equally not terrible around town. I would really have liked for it to have been a little bit better because of how light the traffic was, but equally it means that in bad traffic, you probably wouldn't see any worse than about 32 or 33. Put load in and obviously that's gonna change. Starting with the outside of the transporter, it's a very distinctive and normal look for a transporter. This is a Highline, so it does have 16 inch alloy uh, wheels, but otherwise this you look at and you go, well, it's clearly a transporter. Over the years, they have adapted it and changed it, but for the most part, it still looks like a transporter. The front end is very typically Volkswagen. It has a very Volkswagen-y feel um, with the slightly bigger grill and obviously the big VW on the front. Aside from that, on the outside, as I say, this just looks like a transporter. It's good lines, but it's a panel van. This being a combi, it has a bit more glass. For the most part, it is just as you totally would expect a transporter to look and feel and be. On the outside, one thing to notice are the headlights. Now, this one actually has a high beam assist optioned in, but I can't quite figure out why, because the headlights are terrible. If you're looking at get one of these, do yourself a favor. Uh, if you're gonna do any night driving at all, spec in the better headlights, because these are pretty useless. Not totally useless, you can use them, but if you could go for some bi xenons or LEDs, do it. It is gig test time. So what well, you can't see behind me because there is so much space is that everything that I need is in the back. Plenty of space. It's time to see what the fuel economy is on a run because on paper this should be pretty decent. In reality, well let's see. Obviously A roads, limited speed limit. Motorways though, back up to national. Well, that didn't go quite as planned. The GoPro ran out of battery. I thought I had spares, I didn't, and I thought I'd have more than enough battery left, but I didn't. But the result was a 44.1 miles per gallon, which was over about 160 miles, which is really, really impressive. I was driving at 60, 65, because A, I wasn't in a rush, and B, I wanted to see what the good fuel economy was, but my equipment was never gonna affect that fuel economy. It's a torquey engine, it's got enough power, it's already quite heavy. The weight that I put in it really wasn't going to affect it. So 44 on a run within reason with some, it's a combined run, but more motorway, it's totally feasible. When you step inside, you kind of get into this surprisingly premium looking interior for a, for a van. Uh, there's a really nice mix of good hardware and plastics and premium plastics. My only consideration of that is that 
the nice plastics taper off really aggressively into the not so nice plastics that are hard wearing and are what you would get on a lower bottom end uh, transporter, a cheaper transporter. So really I feel like there could have been more effort done to make it an easier transition. From your driving seat, there's great visibility, huge wing mirrors, uh, this multi-function steering wheel is really useful. The option of the Discovery uh, Media Navigation Unit is superb and when you have App Connect on there, you can have Waze on the Apple CarPlay. As you're sat in the driver's seat, you have bundles and bundles of places to stick things, many, many cubby holes. And in fact, right down here, there is a perfectly placed cup holder in the doors, huge amounts of space. Up front, there's loads of room for everything. And your passenger here, and you, as it has been optioned on this, you can have heated seats. An amazing utility, and they heat up really, really fast. When it comes to your rear seat passengers, while they do have a lot of room, they have no amenities, they have no controls, they have no cup holders. I feel like Volkswagen have just plunked a seat in the back without any consideration of what your rear seat passengers might be wanting to do. For 43,000 pounds, I feel that was a little lazy. So it's quite comfortable inside. It's not massively loud on a run, though the suspension at times can be a little bit unforgiving for generally all round, considering this can take a ton of payload weight in the back. It's, it's relatively firm without breaking your back, let's be honest. The interior is just a very nice place to be and surprisingly luxurious for a van because really you expect something hard wearing that's not gonna be nice to be in. This is actually quite a nice place to be. Just so much equipment can you fit in the back of the transporter? Well, obviously more than I'm gonna be able to put in there, but well, I'm gonna set something up to showcase the uh, versatility and size of the area. Performance and economy. Performance is 150 PS, 340 newton meters of torque, 112 top speed, it's 12 seconds to 62 miles an hour. The fuel economy claims are bold. They say that you should be able to get, I think they say 47 or 48 miles per gallon on a run. Really, I saw at best 43 unladen, 43, 44 unladen. Uh, and they're combined, they're saying, I think you should be getting 42 roughly around that figure and really combined you get like 33 to 35. It, it's a van though that has a lot of remapping potential to increase that fuel economy and really when you think about it as a van goes that's not actually bad fuel economy. I just don't like it when manufacturers say bold claims on fuel economy and it doesn't get it. From a driving point of view it's relatively numb as in it's what you expect from it, but you don't get car driving characteristics. It's easy to drive, you get a good sense of the road and the brakes will stop you in a second. The DSG box is extraordinarily responsive, but at the same time, this drives like a van. It doesn't drive like a car, but you have a nice high seating position. You can see over stuff and it's comfortable to drive everywhere. A great lock means that you can do anything you need to do. On back roads, this really does feel like a van, especially when it's empty. Probably feels better when it's got a load of weight in it. Around town, it's surprisingly quick to get off the mark, and as I said, the DSG box is very, very quick to respond to anything that you ask it to do. On the motorway, it cruises extraordinarily well. This is a van which is made to sit on the motorway and make you very comfortable. So to summarise, this is a van which costs £43,000. I do think it is a little bit pricey for what it is. I think if they knocked I don't know, three or four thousand pounds off it would you know be you'd be you'd be on the money what you do get is while you have more to pay out initially the residual value in these is significantly more than competitive vehicles these transporters hold their value extraordinarily well it is a well-built and rugged vehicle it will do everything that you can throw at it this is the type of vehicle that during the week you can drop the kids to school isofix in the back you can drop the kids to school, do the school run, take it to the yard, do what you need to do during the day. The weekend you can stick some surfboards on the roof or whatever and go to the beach. This is a lifestyle vehicle, more than just a commercial vehicle. So I guess that's where that price comes from. This is not a typical van. It does everything. 